Emmy had just finished her taxing night shift. And was barely keeping her eyes open. Collapsing onto the couch in the residence office. She struggled to focus on a text from Darwin. That had arrived urgently the night before. It was crucial they spoke immediately. She knew she'd have to explain to her fiancé. That her evening had been spent in the operating room. Despite the challenges of her role as an intern. She found fulfillment in her work. With a heavy sigh. Emmy pressed the call button on her phone. But Darwin seemed fast asleep. Evident from the indifferent beats echoing through the speaker. Frustrated. She stretched. Reveling in the sense of accomplishment after a successful surgery. She realized she had a few hours left to sleep before heading home. Yet. That peculiar dream haunted her once more, eerie halls. Tapestries. Unfamiliar faces. And a mysterious woman in an ancient dress offering. A colossal gold ring with a vivid green stone. Before she could touch the ring in her dream. The phone's ring jolted her awake. It was Darwin. Hurriedly answering in a hoarse voice. She skipped the pleasantries. Darwin informed her that he was waiting at a nearby coffee shop. And asked her to join him in 40 minutes. Emmy hastily changed out of her work attire into casual clothes. Feeling the spring breeze fiercely outside. She found Darwin deep in thought. Staring out the window. Sipping on an espresso. Emmy leaned over and lightly kissed him. What's going on? We need to talk. He responded curtly. Avoiding eye contact. Emmy sat down. Reaching for the menu. But he stopped her. Mentioning he had already ordered her a cappuccino. His demeanor lacked warmth. Leaving her unsettled. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten anything substantial since yesterday. Except a couple of apples. Emmy protested. Searching his face for some warmth or affection. But found none. Their eyes finally locked. A pregnant pause enveloping them before Darwin broke the silence. We can't be together anymore. No offense. He declared flatly. I love another girl. And I want to be with her. The sudden confession left Emmy bewildered. Her brain struggling to process his words. Her mind felt muddled. Her tongue seemingly paralyzed. Outside the cafe window. People strolled down the sunlit street. Oblivious to the emotional turmoil within. The promising warmth of a May morning hung in the air. Time suspended in the quiet cafe. Emmy kept searching Darwin's impassive face. Seeking traces of the man who. Just 24 hours prior. Had bid her goodbye lovingly before work. Sharing passionate kisses in public. I don't understand. Her voice trembled. Betraying her confusion. Who's the other girl? Darwin responded calmly. Sipping his coffee. Let's not argue. Okay. No scenes. He reiterated. Triggering a surge of bitterness and resentment in Emmy. Intensifying her headache. The waitress brought a steaming cappuccino. Providing a momentary distraction. Who is she? When did this start? Emmy struggled to articulate her thoughts. Our relationship is three months old. I couldn't find the right time to tell you amidst the accident. Your illness. And your dad's passing. Darwin explained. His words inflicting humiliation upon Emmy. An unfamiliar sensation. Covering her eyes briefly. Emmy felt the sting of this new humiliation. When she opened them. She noticed Miss Lena approaching. In an instant. Everything fell into place. Lena. The daughter of her adoptive father's business partner. Heiress to a prosperous construction company. A perfect match for Darwin in his mother's eyes. Emmy raised her head. Meeting Lena's gaze with a forced smile. 
refusing to reveal her tears to this immaculate figure. Lana's moving in with me. Darwin stated. A calculated blow to his now ex fiance I'll pack your things. I'll take them in my car. Emmy maintained a wavering composure. Where do you want them? She stared into emptiness for a moment. Before turning slowly to meet his eyes. Just get them out. Get out of my life. An hour later. Emmy found solace in her mother's embrace. In a familiar kitchen of a small apartment. Where the scent of childhood lingered. Tears flowing freely but finding comfort in the familiarity. It was a Saturday. Her mother's day off. Emmy wasn't one for excessive sentimentality. Yet in that moment. Her childhood home felt like the only refuge from the torrent of emotions. Especially the betrayal from the man. She'd devoted three years of her life to. Recent months had dealt her a series of shocks. First. A harrowing accident nearly claimed her life. Necessitating a blood transfusion. This led to the revelation that she wasn't her parents' biological child. But was adopted from an orphanage years ago. With no clues about her origins. Then. Her father suffered a fatal stroke amidst the chaos. Though Emmy remained unconscious. She held his hand in his final moments. This morning had been the tipping point. Unabashed. Emmy sobbed. Seeking solace in the familiar sense of Valerian and her mother's perfume. But. Honey. You can't do this. Everything will be alright. Mrs. Kate comforted her daughter. Her own tears barely contained. Deep in thought. Mrs. Kate mused. He. The pampered son of affluent parents. The golden boy. No match for my smart. Independent. And beautiful daughter. They spent the day in the kitchen. Consuming copious amounts of strong mint tea. As evening descended. They switched to fresh cherry wine before retiring to bed. Emmy settled into her old room. Frozen in time since the day she left for Darwin's two years ago. Relaxing into her bed. Exhaustion and the day's tumult washed over her. Despite the alcohol and the hospital shift. She slipped into a profound slumber. Once again. The woman in the antique dress visited her dreams. This time. She beckoned Emmy into her clandestine realm. Leading her down a spiraling staircase seemingly descending into the earth's depths. Emmy attempted to call out but found herself drawn downward. The stone steps rustled with an eerie sound as they traversed the obscure corridor. Eventually. They stood before a door adorned with a depiction of. Intertwined plant stems forming an ominous bouquet. Wormwood. Nettle. And other unfamiliar flora adorned the illustration. Totaling nine intertwining stems. Gasping for air. Emmy startled awake in the still darkness. A chill breeze fluttered the curtains near the open window. Leaving her drenched in sweat and breathless. Akin to having traversed rugged landscapes in a marathon. Her racing heartbeat thudded loudly. Causing a sense of dizziness. Her vision blurred. And her fingertips tingled. As though charged with electricity. Thirsty. She shuffled barefoot into the kitchen. Gulping water and hastily nibbling on a cookie. Casting disdainful glances at the empty wine bottle by the sink. The hallway clock displayed four in the morning. The dream lingered vividly in Emmy's mind. So lifelike that it felt tangible. She pondered the mysterious drawing on that door and the recurrent intrusion of the enigmatic woman into her thoughts. Fetching her laptop from her suitcase, Emmy settled on the bed, contemplating what she sought. Plants. Symbols. Signs. Or the woman with the ring. Dismissing it as nonsensical. She keyed. Wormwood. Chamomile. Nettle. Into Google. 
The search yielded a sequence, plantain, fennel, hops, ginger, marjoram, applewood, vervain, mugwort, a compilation known as the Nine Sacred Herbs. Further exploration led to references about Odin's conspiracy, witches' brocade, and the dichotomy of black and white magic. Disheartened, she deemed it a futile pursuit. Setting aside the notebook and collapsing onto her pillow, Darwin's heart-wrenching confession echoed in her mind, triggering tears streaming down her cheeks. Her impending birthday loomed ahead. Devoid of Darwin's presence or her father's comforting embrace, the night shift at the hospital reminded her of the gaping void. In her life and the unanswered questions about her birth story, roots, lineage, the origins of her vibrant hair, and those emerald green eyes. Sunday afternoon dragged by at her parents' house. Each moment seemingly stretching endlessly. Her mother bustled in the kitchen. The aroma of soup filling the air. Outside. A neighbor's child practiced the violin. Accompanied by the joyful clamor of other kids. Emmy deeply missed her father's kind gaze his sagacious advice, and the solace of his embrace. Their reverential relationship had made his passing profoundly painful. The tingling sensation in her fingertips intensified, a tangible manifestation of her inner turmoil. As the evening progressed, an inexplicable restlessness seemed to course through the girl, every touch sending electric jolts, making it uncomfortably painful adding to her discomfort. Her vision blurred. And her sense of smell dulled. Must be a cold. Emmy reasoned. Seeking refuge under a blanket. Trembling as she shivered through the night. She slept fitfully. Dreams evading her. Replaced by fleeting images and unfamiliar objects. That left her thoroughly drained. Upon waking. The morning greeted her with a deluge of rain, carrying scents of lilacs and wet asphalt into her room through the open window, tinged with the unmistakable scent of ozone. Weary, she attended to herself in the bathroom, washing her hair, and faced her reflection in the mirror. A tired figure with dark circles and a pallid complexion, all attributed to stress. She concluded, Somewhere nearby. The buzz of a hairdryer hummed behind a wall. The hallway clock ticked. And the refrigerator grumbled in the kitchen. Emmy. Suddenly attuned to every sound. Brushed her teeth. Only to find her mother had brewed coffee and prepared breakfast. Scrambled eggs with cheese. Awaiting her at the kitchen table. They ate in silence avoiding discussions about the past or future. Until a message from Darwin popped up. I still have your books. I'll bring them to you at work. The Surgical Handbook. Emmy debated replying but found herself hastily agreeing to the meeting. Bidding her mother goodbye as she hurried out. At the bus stop. Rain poured down. And a sea of people crowded every corner leaving Emmy anxious about being late for work. Frustration built within her until a stroke of unexpected energy surged through her chest, compelling her to consider alternatives. A minibus appeared, crammed with passengers, yet it halted abruptly. As the doors opened, a young man at the threshold stumbled slightly. However, catching sight of Emmy, he swiftly leaped out and insisted. Miss. You're soaked. Please come in. I'll wait for the next one. Overwhelmed. Emmy hesitated but was drawn by an inexplicable pull. Gratefully mumbling her thanks. She boarded the minibus. Leaving the disheartened face of the guide behind. Stranded at the rain-soaked bus stop. Emmy arrived at work just in time discovering a bag of books on her desk in the resident's office. Bella. 
the nurse. Relayed that Darwin had dropped them off. Visibly angry. Not bothering to inquire about Emmy. Merely leaving the bag before hurrying away. Holding back tears. Emmy struggled through a hectic day. The hours passing by in a blur. Towards the end of the day. An emergency patient arrived. Injured from a car accident. Bleeding profusely from her neck. Rushed to the operating room. Emmy. In a panic. Applied pressure to the wound. Hoping to save the girl's life. However. To her astonishment. Upon reaching the operating table. The wound had miraculously healed. Leaving her baffled as she assisted the surgeons mechanically. Returning to her residency. Emmy examined the bag of books Darwin had brought. Among medical references and textbooks was an unfamiliar. Ancient-looking book with no title or publication year. Written in an obscure language. Old Slavonic or Latin. It appeared like an incomprehensible recipe book to her. She dialed Darwin. Seeking an explanation about the mysterious book. His response was unsettling. Accusing her of being strange and disavowing any connection to occult literature, urging her not to contact him again. Emmy stared at the enigmatic book, sensing an eerie liveliness emanating from its vibrating pages, leaving her with a disconcerting feeling that something bizarre was unfolding. Searching the internet, she stumbled upon references to witches, a wreath, and nine sacred herbs. Reopening the book, she noticed a monogram in the corner. The same intricate design she'd seen painted on the door in her dream. A complex weave of nine sacred plants. A chill ran down her spine as the room seemed to fall silent. Punctuated only by inexplicable. Unfamiliar noises echoing around her. Emmy could swear she discerned the faint rustle. A fabric against the cold parquet floor in her residence room. A sensation echoing through her mind long after she arrived home. Seeking solace. She hastened to the shower. Hoping the scalding jets might wash away the perplexing events of the day. Yet, even amidst the cascading water. Her mind couldn't find a rational explanation for the inexplicable occurrences. Returning to her room. She reopened her laptop. Delving into the realms of the internet once more. She typed. Nine sacred herbs. Into the search bar. Familiar references cluttering the results. But one entry stood out. An inconspicuous link nestled at the bottom. Clicking it. She encountered a list of these mystical herbs. Each one purportedly significant in white witchcraft. Wormwood, chamomile, nettle, and others formed the essential elements. In moon-sanctified conspiracies and rituals. Claimed to be wielded for benevolent purposes. The overwhelming information left her dizzy. Her eyelids drooping as if weighted down. Before she could process the newfound knowledge. She succumbed to a deep slumber. Only to be ensnared in a dream. The woman with the pallid face reappeared. Bearing a wreath in her hands. Despite the chilling aura. Emmy felt an eerie calmness. As if her fear had been replaced by an icy numbness. Darkness encroached. Engulfing her vision. Leaving her with nothing but enigmatic. Fiery eyes and a hauntingly victorious grin. As the woman placed the wreath upon Emmy's head. A sudden jolt woke her from her sleep. Fluctuating between extreme temperatures. She felt herself drifting on the brink of consciousness. Caught in an inexplicable whirlwind. When she awoke on the morning of her 20th birthday. A profound transformation had overtaken her. A surge of vitality and strength coursed through her. Dispelling the previous day's despair and bitterness. As if it had been cleansed by the extraordinary night. Her mother greeted her jubilantly. Presenting the customary birthday cake. Accompanied by a small box adorned with a scarlet bow. 
opening it revealed a silver pendant crafted in the likeness of a wreath. Comprised of nine distinct stems. Emmy was taken aback. Nearly dropping the gift. Her voice trembling as she questioned her mother about the uncanny symbol. Mrs. Kate. Bewildered herself. Explained she had purchased it from a jewelry shop. The convergence of too many coincidences. And enigmatic symbols overwhelmed Emmy. Leaving her on the precipice of astonishment and disquiet. A sense of eerie foreboding lingering in the air. You won't believe this. Her mother began. Sharing a curious revelation. That pendant was from a dream I had. I envisioned it on you and decided to order it. Did it unsettle you? Darling? She comfortingly draped an arm around Emmy's shoulders. Concern etched on her face. Is everything all right? Emmy, having regained composure, replied with an attempt at a smile. I just didn't expect such an unusual gift from you. Thank you. As her colleagues poured in, showering her with birthday wishes and celebrations, they settled down for tea and cake. Amidst the joviality, a newspaper caught Emmy's eye atop a pile of medical files. Without understanding why, she picked it up. Flipping through to the classifieds, a particular advertisement stood out. A plea for a nurse at Mrs. Nelson's estate, offering weekly payment for tending to a disabled resident. An inexplicable urge compelled Emmy to dial the number listed. After a few rings, a mature voice answered from Mrs. Nelson's mansion, expressing urgency in needing a nurse. Emmy, despite her own uncertainty, arranged an interview for the following day. Upon receiving the address, emotion surged within her, touching the pendant her mother had gifted. She sensed an inexplicable vibration from its silver surface heightening her anticipation for the impending change. The following day at work passed in a daze. She mechanically executed her duties. Her mind preoccupied with the upcoming meeting. Rushing home in the morning, she hurriedly changed clothes and darted out. Nearly colliding with a neighbor and her dog in her haste. Apologizing swiftly. She sprinted to the bus stop. Then the train station buying a ticket at lightning speed, and within 30 minutes found herself on the train, heart pounding with nervousness. The scenery outside the window shifted. High-rises, parks, factories, cottages, and farmlands, until the train veered into a wooded area, the landscape altering dramatically. As the train halted at a secluded station, she encountered two elderly women selling sunflower seeds. Disembarking from the train into the sunlight. She began her mile and a half trek through the wooded path. Grateful for her comfortable sneakers. Greeting the old ladies. She inquired about the direction and swiftly treaded the indicated path. The serene beauty of the forest surrounding her. The filtered sunlight cast enchanting patterns through the trees illuminating the path ahead. Her anticipation heightened as she ventured deeper into this remote realm. Her mind rife with curiosity about what awaited her in this secluded, almost mystical setting. Inhaling the scented air, Emmy found herself immersed in a symphony of nature. The vibrant melody of birdsong harmonizing with the buzz of insects. Every corner of the wilderness seemed teeming with renewed life and she felt an unexpected sense of unity with the surrounding beauty. This untamed wilderness was a stark contrast to her usual surroundings, making her feel oddly out of place yet entirely captivated. After what felt like a leisurely stroll of about a mile, she encountered a meticulously carved leather sign reading, Mrs. Nelson's Mansion. Hastening her pace, she traversed the remaining stretch of the path and, within 15 minutes, emerged from the woods into a vast clearing, where an astonishing sight awaited her. 
Emmy had anticipated a moderately aged, slightly unkempt two-story house, considering the owner's reported disability. However, nestled amidst a row of majestic poplars, she beheld an imposing old mansion that surpassed her wildest imagination. It stood three stories tall. Its grandeur augmented by the flourishing ivy that adorned its ancient walls. The porch's stately stone pillars resembled those of the Acropolis. Albeit not as ancient. The estate encompassed several structures. A large garage. Stables. And a carriage shed. Conjuring a feeling of stepping back in time. It's like a time travel. Her thoughts raced. Struck by the atmospheric splendor surrounding her. The surroundings seemed to beckon historical filmmaking. Without the need for any fabricated settings. As she approached the door. It swung open without her having to ring the bell. Revealing a short, poised woman around 65. Exuding an air of genteel grace. Her neatly grayed hair coiled into a tight bun. Adorned with pleated pants and a light blouse. Contrasted with Emmy's casual attire. Welcome. My dear. We've eagerly awaited your arrival. The woman greeted warmly. Ushering Emmy into the inviting foyer. Hello. I'm Mrs. Nelson. And you are Emmy. She continued. Leading her through the invitingly spacious living room. Their steps echoed across the cool. Inviting interiors. Each space seemingly frozen in time. Exuding a timeless elegance that transcended the present. Shall we have a conversation in the library? It offers a splendid view of the blooming garden, Mrs. Nelson suggested. And they made their way into the room. Where daylight poured in through expansive black-framed windows. Painting the scene outside with natural brilliance. Please. Have a seat. She urged. Pointing to an inviting chair. Emmy settled in. Observing Mrs. Nelson's poised demeanor as she reached for her cell phone. Hinting at a bygone era when a bell might have summoned a maid. Instead. A number was dialed. Ushering in the tranquil atmosphere of the ancient yet captivating mansion. Lizzie. Would you be so kind as to prepare some tea for us? And do bring something delightful for our guest. Mrs. Nelson requested before seating herself. Comfortably across from Emmy in the library. Observing her host's poised demeanor. Emmy began recounting her credentials. Mentioning her diploma from the institute and. The certifications obtained through various courses. But Mrs. Nelson gently interrupted her. Expressing her belief that Emmy was indeed the right person for the role. I can see you're the right fit for us. Mrs. Nelson smiled reassuringly. Her eyes reflecting a depth of understanding honed over the years. You see. My dear. What we truly need is not just a nurse. But a companion. Emmy was taken aback. I thought your ward was your husband. She admitted. Surprised at the revelation. Mrs. Nelson's demeanor shifted momentarily. A hint of sadness shadowing her features. My husband passed away forty years ago. Charles. My grandson. Is the one I care for now. He's a young man of twenty-eight. Sadly. He's confined to a wheelchair. I'm so sorry for your loss. Emmy expressed genuine sympathy. Losing your child and seeing your only grandchild in pain must be incredibly difficult. Mrs. Nelson nodded. Dabbing her eyes with a handkerchief. My son was just 53 when he passed. Only women seem to have long lives in our family. Generation after generation. Just then. The door creaked open. Admitting a sturdy woman in her fifties. Carrying a large tray. This is Lizzie. Mrs. 
Nelson introduced. She helps with the cooking and some household tasks. Lizzie greeted Emmy casually. Acknowledging the new arrangement for Charles's care. Thank goodness. I hope she's up to the task. Our host is an invalid after all. She remarked. Prompting a reproachful look from Mrs. Nelson before she retreated. Seated comfortably. Mrs. Nelson poured lavender tea for her guest. Watching with a pleased expression as Emmy. Savored the aroma wafting from the cup. It smells amazing. Emmy remarked. Inhaling the fragrant steam that rose from the tea. Emmy. Having left her home without breakfast. Indulged heartily in a freshly baked croissant and. Homemade cookies generously provided by Lizzie. Mrs. Nelson. Meanwhile. Contented herself with small sips of tea. Relishing the presence of her new guest, the library's grand doors swung open. Inviting in a rush of outside air. Heralding the arrival of a young man. Dressed in casual attire. A cotton shirt and jeans. And confined to a modern wheelchair. He commanded the threshold. Emmy felt a sudden jolt course through her body at the sight of him. His chiseled features. Sculpted like stone were framed by dark curly hair. His once powerful shoulders now slouched. Evidence of a physical strength that lay dormant. The coldness in his deep gray eyes was stark. Almost piercing. This is my grandson. Mrs. Nelson announced. A note of pride in her voice. As she hurriedly introduced the young man named Charles to Emmy. Grandma. I asked you. Charles muttered. Barely sparing a glance at Emmy. His expression was one of barely contained frustration. His lips forming a tight line. Unfazed. Mrs. Nelson attempted to defend herself. Of course. You don't need a nurse or an assistant. Emmy. Emboldened by a newfound determination. Interjected. I'm here to help you get back on your feet. She was surprised by her own declaration. Yet somehow. She knew it to be true. Both grandmother and grandson turned to face her. Startled by her unexpected statement. Charles's gaze locked with Emmy's. Their eyes engaging in a silent battle of wills. It was a peculiar. Intense moment. As if they were trying to decipher each other's thoughts. But the standoff was brief. Charles abruptly turned away and left the room. Leaving behind an uncomfortable silence. Mrs. Nelson. Clearly affected. Sighed deeply and sank into her chair. The joviality that once adorned her face now vanished. Emmy. Undeterred by the unexpected turn of events. Remained resolute. I believe things will work out. She stated firmly. Sensing a flicker of hope that she held on to dearly. Mrs. Nelson. Still trying to grasp the situation. Remarked. You shouldn't have said that. Charles is still grappling with the loss and the reality of his situation. He's wounded in the heart. She continued. Revealing more about Charles's ordeal. He lost friends and even his fiancée. Who couldn't bear the confinement and left him. Emmy exuded quiet confidence. Everything will be all right. She assured. Determined to instill hope in the face of adversity. A mutual understanding passed between the two women, their smiles acknowledging the shared faith in a better future. The following day found Emmy seated before her boss. Quietly penning her resignation letter. Lines flowed from her hand in a blur. Almost as if guided by an unseen force. Less than a day had elapsed since her departure from Mrs. Nelson's mansion. Yet the impact of those moments lingered vividly within her. Emmy grappled with an indescribable feeling. A fusion of confusion. Fear. Joy. 
an excitement that swirled within her. The anticipated two-week tenure that lay ahead of her seemed to flit by like a fleeting moment. She mechanically executed her responsibilities, filling out case histories, making rounds, and lending a hand wherever needed. Her mother's embrace before departing lingered in her memory. Mrs. Kate's tearful plea for daily contact resonated deeply within Emmy. Please call me every day. Mrs. Kate implored. Her eyes glistening with tears. I'll go crazy otherwise. You're going so far away. I'll write to you. Mummy. Emmy assured. Pressing her lips to her mother's cheek and taking in her familiar. Sent with a mixture of comfort and longing. As Emmy embarked on her journey to Mrs. Nelson's residence. She was met by the welcoming figure of Mrs. Nelson herself. The first day of summer found Mrs. Nelson exuding warmth. Adorned in an elegant silk dress adorned with vibrant floral patterns. A cheerful hug and an assurance of lunch in. An hour greeted Emmy as she settled in. Inside the mansion. Aside from Mrs. Nelson and Lizzie. There were a few others who resided there. A driver. A gardener and the caretaker of the stables, where Sokolova kept several horses. Emmy was provided a bright, inviting room on the first floor, adjacent to the library and close to Charles's room. As she unpacked her belongings, the faint sounds of Charles's armchair movements, and the melody of Mozart's music permeated the space, hinting at his appreciation for the famed composer. Emmy surveyed her new living quarters. A room bedecked in silvery tones with furnishings. That were both modest and tastefully modern. The room exuded an unpretentious elegance that resonated with her. A large, inviting dark oak bed stood as the centerpiece amidst two cottonwood nightstands. A soft glow emanating from the light fixture above. The room lacked ostentatious displays but exuded an inviting charm. It was devoid of grand chandeliers or high-tech gadgets. Instead offering a serene ambience. Amidst her unpacking, Emmy swapped her attire for a neat, peach-colored suit she had acquired during her travels in Turkey. Feeling a sense of contentment settle within her amid this new, yet welcoming, environment. A couple of years ago, Emmy acquired a peach-colored suit from Turkey, and a pair of comfortable loafer shoes. She tied her hair into a simple ponytail before taking a deep breath, attempting to calm her nerves. Opening the door to the hallway, she stepped forward, embarking on a new chapter of her life. Seeking composure, Emmy navigated her way to the dining room, knocked on the door, and upon entry, was greeted by a welcoming Mrs. Nelson. Come in. My dear. Sit beside me. Mrs. Nelson said. Her warmth in stark contrast to the frosty gaze of Charles, who fixated on Emmy from across the room. Caught in the intensity of Charles's icy gray eyes, Emmy felt momentarily uncertain. His piercing stare conveyed a silent question. What are you doing here? Summoning her resolve. She managed. Good afternoon. Mr. Charles. As she slowly made her way to a chair beside Mrs. Nelson. Her greeting was met with a curt response from Charles. That is your name. Isn't it? Their exchange was punctuated by a moment of eye contact where Emmy steadfastly held his gaze before shifting the conversation. When would you like to start classes? She asked, attempting to steer the conversation toward a more practical aspect. As soon as possible. Emmy. Charles replied sharply, his tone betraying a hint of discomfort at her presence. Sensing his apprehension, Emmy pivoted to discuss his medical needs. 
emphasizing massages, water treatments, and a prescribed regimen of medications. Charles, dismissive of his own situation, remarked cynically on the hopelessness of his case, but reluctantly agreed to comply with his grandmother's wishes. As they sat down for lunch, Charles nonchalantly consumed his soup while Mrs. Nelson observed silently, occasionally casting a glance between her grandson and Emmy. Emmy, finding it challenging to eat amidst the tense atmosphere, barely touched her meal, feeling an unspoken force compelling her to stay despite the uncomfortable circumstances. After lunch, Emmy retreated to her room and changed into her medical attire, laying out the treatment plan provided by Mrs. Nelson. Drawing from her expertise and prior training, she prepared to initiate the therapies. Having extensively researched through online resources and specialized courses during her time at the Institute, Emmy felt confident in her abilities. Heading out to begin her duties, she found Charles in the garden, holding a book but appearing distant, his gaze fixed beyond the groves. Lost in contemplation, this encounter marked the start of her attempts to engage with her reluctant ward. What are you reading? She asked, breaking the silence that enveloped Charles's secluded demeanor. One hundred years of solitude. He replied. No trace of arrogance or resentment in his voice as he turned toward her. His calmness surprised her, causing her heart to flutter. She noticed his long-fingered hands clutching a thick binder. Where were you staying? He inquired indicating his interest in her sudden presence. I was just getting started. And I don't like Merck's. She shrugged, settling beside him on the bench, which sported a checkered plate. I'm closer to Dumas or Jane Austen. She added, attempting to navigate the conversation away from the brooding silence. Charles chuckled. Such a young lady like you must not yet be spoiled by the bitter experience of life. Do you still believe in princes? Not anymore. She responded with a smile. But I believe in nobility. Honor. Generosity. Courage. And destiny. So. You're a romantic heroine. I suppose. He observed. His demeanor changing as he looked at her intently. Her smile widened. And you? I guess it depends on the circumstances. He replied cryptically. At the moment. Romance is as far away from me as life itself. Or have I suddenly become serious? Then perhaps it's time I reminded you that we have procedures today. She said. Attempting to divert his thoughts. As the weather started to change. She grabbed a plate from the bench and draped her shawl over her shoulders, accidentally brushing Charles's cheek in the process, sending an electric shock through both of them. Sensing the unexpected moment, Charles averted his eyes, breaking the intense gaze for the first time in their brief acquaintance. It's getting chilly. Let's go. She said, trying to compose herself. I'll have to treat you for a cold too if you don't. Though he grunted in response. He allowed her to guide him into the house. His mind undoubtedly occupied by more than just the changing weather. Opening the door to his room. Emmy ushered in a chair. Intending to assist him. Let me help you onto the bed. And we'll start. She said. Noticing his grip on the chair his fingers turning white. You don't need to be embarrassed. Mr. Charles. I'm a nurse. Thank you very much. She stated. Trying to ease the tension. He replied sarcastically. I feel much better now. As he finally reclined on the bed. Exhaling noisily. It was evident that his encounter with a young and beautiful woman in his room was an unfamiliar experience. 
especially since his fiancée had departed two years prior. Emmy observed Charles's physique. Once robust and sturdy, now exhibiting the remnants of past strength and athleticism. Despite his underlying musculature, it was evident that disuse had taken a toll on his body. She scrutinized his legs, noticing their diminished muscle mass, a stark contrast to what they had been before. Concern clouded her thoughts as she cautiously reached out to touch his legs. Yet a peculiar tingling sensation washed over her, inducing an unsettling shiver. Charles appeared equally troubled, as though carrying a heavy burden. His countenance fraught with sorrow. As she gingerly massaged his legs, a surge of determination surged through her, wishing fervently for his recovery. Suddenly, he interrupted her actions. I felt something. He exclaimed, drawing her attention. Your hand. On the big toe of my left foot. Encouraged by his words, Emmy continued the massage, focusing on his ankle. His eyes glimmered with a fervent intensity, expressing a glimmer of hope. Good. Keep going. He urged. Later that night, as Emmy lay in her bed, she found herself dwelling on the day's events, grappling with the inexplicable occurrences around her. There was an undeniable familiarity about the house, the setting, and the people, especially Charles, the array of emotions she experienced, joy, disbelief, and an underlying fear of the unknown echoed within her, leaving her questioning the reality of the miracles she seemed to evoke. A vivid dream emerged in her mind, where she found herself in a room illuminated by candles, witnessing an intimate moment between a man and a woman, their affectionate exchange, the warmth in their eyes, felt eerily familiar to her, particularly the man's striking gray eyes, the declaration of love, the exchange of a ring. It all felt so real. Awakening her in the dead of night. Her body drenched in cold sweat. Heart racing uncontrollably. In a daze. Emmy reached for a glass of water. Her trembling fingers betraying her disquietude. An inexplicable compulsion gripped her. Urging her to step into the hallway. Despite the late hour and the surreal nature of her emotions. There was a stillness in the hallway, an eerie silence that enveloped Emmy as she stood, feeling the haunting echoes of unseen presence. Despite the empty corridor, she could almost swear she heard the faint rustling of skirts outside Charles's room. Driven by an inexplicable impulse, she moved closer, and without a moment's hesitation, she gently pushed the door open. Charles sat on the bed. A look of agitation etched across his face. Beads of sweat glistening on his forehead. Startled yet unfazed by Emmy's nocturnal arrival. He peered at her intently. His voice tinged with urgency. Who are you? Emmy was taken aback but managed to reply. I don't know. I had a dream. I had a dream too. Charles interjected his gaze piercing hers. You were in my dream. The conversation shifted, shedding formality, slipping into an unusual intimacy. They found themselves entangled in an awkward silence. Sitting in shared perplexity, Emmy cautiously approached, taking a seat beside him on the edge of the bed. Their connection transcending words. I have this feeling that I didn't just stumble upon this house. She ventured. Charles nodded in understanding. I think I've been here before. I have these strange dreams. As if they're from the past. Their discussion wove threads of familial ties and peculiar visions. Charles recounted the supposed family curse. A lineage plagued by premature deaths. It's like there's a curse on my family. Men don't seem to live past a certain age. 
Emmy's thoughts raised as she absorbed the weight of his words. What kind of curse is that? She asked. Trying to mask her unease. He delved into the ancestral lore, recounting a tale of betrayal and a vengeful curse placed by a spurned lover. They say my ancestor betrayed his love. And she cursed him. It's as if I relive their story in my dreams. Her mind reeled as he described the visions. Today. Tonight. I saw them in bed. And he gave her a ring. He revealed. Sending a jolt through Emmy's being. Speechless and bewildered. She felt a fiery surge through her fingertips. Igniting a cascade of enigmatic revelations in her mind. As she looked at Charles. Their eyes locked in an unwavering gaze. She sensed a depth in him. An inherited history of family woes. Echoing through centuries of misfortune. Tragedy. And irreparable loss. Emmy's emotions surged uncontrollably. A primal urgency urging her to connect with Charles. His hand found its place at the nape of her neck. Drawing her in closer until their lips brushed. Unleashing a torrent of memories from their past lives. Visions cascaded through their minds. Scenes of birth. Tragic farewells. An overflow of feelings. Fears. Hopes. And an overwhelming love that transcended time. Before she knew it. Emmy found herself reclined next to Charles. On the austere orthopedic bed. It was as though a remarkable transformation was taking place. She sensed a vitality. An unrestrained passion. Far removed from the invalid lying beside her. It was a union steeped in strength. An unbreakable connection that enveloped them. Forging an inexplicable bond. The gentle embrace between the two lingered. A momentary respite in their newfound union. But as dawn tiptoed into the room. The world outside came alive. The distant whinnying of horses from the stables. The mellifluous song of a rooster beneath her window. Charles. Stirred by the morning's arrival. Hastily gathered his attire from the previous night. Emmy. My dear. I must go. He murmured. Leaning close to the drowsy girl who tenderly. Enveloped him in her embrace once more. Reluctantly. Charles disengaged himself and slipped away into the dawn's embrace. As the realization of the night's events settled upon her, Emmy felt an unexpected comfort lying beside Charles. As if she had finally found her sanctuary after an arduous journey. More significantly, she sensed something. A burgeoning sensation. Despite Charles's paralysis. With careful movements. She disentangled herself from his arm. Gently placing her feet on the floor in search of her slippers. Standing up. She paused. Observing Charles still sound asleep. As she tucked the blanket around him. Her attention turned to his ankle. Prompting her to address it in the gentlest manner. She focused her mind with an intensity that seemed to awaken wild. Potent energy. Radiating from her being. As she delved deeper into her concentration, she felt herself slipping into a peculiar trance-like state. The boundaries of the universe seemed to contract, enveloping her in a supportive embrace. As if the cosmos itself were urging her forward. I'm awake. I can feel your touch. Charles's excited voice jolted her from her reverie. Her gaze initially passed over his face. Fixating on the woman concealed in the shadows near the curtain. The sun's rays failed to touch her. But her piercing eyes held Emmy's captive. This woman. Unseen but ever present. Seemed to have observed her presence numerous times before. It was she who had been left behind by the man ensnared. In a dream of the girl earlier that morning. Suddenly. The uninvited figure raised her hands to her face nearly causing Emmy to lose her senses. Her arms bore ominous marks. Charred and enraged. 
the stench of burnt flesh permeated the air. Inciting a turmoil of emotions within Emmy. What had outraged her? What had happened? Charles. What's wrong? Charles grabbed Emmy's arm. And the figure dissolved into the ether. As though it had never existed. No traces of blood adorned the girl's face. She was as pale as chalk. A haunting apparition. Nothing. She replied slowly. Guiding Charles's hand up her leg. Revealing her calf muscles. Yes. Even here. Instantly forgetting the strange occurrence. Charles's eyes shimmered with joy. It's like a miracle. He exclaimed. His excitement palpable. You're a miracle. But please. Let's not tell anyone until we're certain. Emmy urged him gently. Charles. Now resembling a child. Nodded eagerly. There was a newfound connection that had burgeoned. Between them in the course of that transformative night. I won't tell anyone. But now. I have to sneak back to my room and clean myself up. She whispered. Preparing to leave. Charles. Overcome by a sense of closeness. Pulled her toward him. It felt so natural to Emmy that she didn't resist. A moment of unspoken understanding between them. She gently placed her hand on his chest and tenderly kissed his cheek. Don't be long. Murmured Charles. Reluctantly releasing her from his embrace. I won't be long. She promised. Slipping out the door. Within half an hour. They were seated in the dining room. Relishing the sandwiches prepared by Lizzie. Mrs. Nelson chattered animatedly. Though she couldn't conceal from her keen eyes, the transformation that had transpired between the young pair. You both look very happy today. She observed casually. Sipping her tea. Charles merely smiled. Casting a meaningful glance at Emmy. Following breakfast. They spent a considerable time practicing in the gymnasium. Afterwards. They requested coffee from Lizzie before venturing out into the garden. Despite the sunny weather. A cool breeze swept in from the river. Hinting at imminent rain. Seating themselves in the ivy-covered gazebo. They found a secluded spot hidden by the verdant leaves. Emmy carefully arranged the plate over Charles's legs. Come here. He called out to her as she prepared to settle on the bench beside him. Are you sure? She asked cautiously. Casting a glance at his delicate knees. Absolutely. Affirmed Charles. I'm not as weak as you think. Emmy smiled and cautiously perched on his lap. Enfolding him in an embrace. For a brief five seconds. They gazed into each other's eyes as if time had stood still followed by a long and intoxicating kiss that took them both by surprise. Emmy withdrew slightly from their entwined lips. We need to talk. You know. She murmured. Charles smiled and drew her closer. Placing an arm around her waist. It's evident that we're entangled in some kind of tragic narrative. Unfortunately. I don't know much about my lineage. He confessed about the lack of information from the place where he was before adoption. Except for the revelation that his real last name was not Hikens. But Peterson. Actually. I have some thoughts. Emmy said softly. Charles took her hand and gently pressed it to his lips. Once upon a time. My family had neighbors. The Petersons. This was around 200 years ago. But then. The estate and all its buildings were engulfed in flames. How it happened. I don't know. Charles recounted. The entire Peterson family. Along with their servants. Perished in that fire. There were rumors of arson. But no conclusive evidence was found. You could explore the archives of the local museum for more information. Unexpectedly. 
A vivid image of a woman. Her hands scarred and burnt. Flashed before Emmy and Charles. Emmy turned to Charles. Her gaze earnest. I had a dream this morning in your room. She began. Searching his eyes for understanding. The woman from our visions. She appeared in my bedroom too. Charles. Though intrigued. Couldn't hide the incredulity in his voice. What do you mean? He asked. Slightly skeptical. I believe she was present. Or perhaps her ghost. Emmy explained. Her eyes averted. I sensed something or someone near me. In your room. By the curtain. I saw a woman with long arms. I even caught the scent of something burning. It could be a clue. But I'm uncertain if she was associated with. The Peterson family or merely related to them. Perhaps she was hurt or burned there. Only her hand seemed affected. Charles pondered her words. Silently considering the information. In those days. All births and deaths were recorded in church books. Like registry records. He mused. Those books might still exist. The church. Though abandoned. Might still hold clues. How will we find those books? Emmy inquired. Won't they have deteriorated over time? It's worth a try. Charles replied. We can explore. Can you drive? Emmy confirmed her ability to drive. Grateful for Darwin's insistence on teaching her. An hour later. They loaded Charles's wheelchair into the vintage car. Placing him in the passenger seat with the help of a groom. Setting off down a dirt road that gradually. Transitioned from woods to serene groves. Charles explained the family's history to Emmy. The church. Once part of a wealthy estate. Served a parish consisting solely of two estate's inhabitants. Amidst their drive. Charles recounted historical details. Delving into the church's significance in the region's past. He shared anecdotes about the affluent status it once held. Juxtaposed against its current abandoned state. As they journeyed toward the church. Charles unveiled layers of family history. Creating an intricate tapestry of tales that were both fascinating and haunting. As the wheels of the car traversed the dusty dirt road. Charles recounted a tale of the family's loss. One day. All our property was stolen and destroyed. The icons within the church were deliberately burned. There's talk about something hidden away. But that's likely just a local myth. As for the books. I'm unsure. They might have been stowed in concealed places or within the wall mages. Typical structures within each church. Emmy deftly navigated the twists and turns of the road. Concealing excitement as she absorbed the historical insights. She glanced at Charles with astonishment. How do you know all this? I studied history at university. And I'm an archaeologist. Charles explained. I've been part of many excavations. The journey continued. Leading them through the grove until it opened up to a vast. Plain dotted with ruins at the center. A strange sense of deja vu washed over Emmy. As if she'd been here in a distant memory. A figure lingered by the ruins. Difficult to discern from a distance but somehow familiar to her. Upon reaching the road's end where the narrow path began. The figure vanished into the bushes. Surrounded by thickets and tangled foliage. Realizing the wheelchair was impractical in this terrain. Charles grappled with a sense of frustration. What was I thinking? It's all right. Emmy reassured him. I'll go check it out. Concern etched across his face. Charles grabbed her hand. Pleading. I can't let you go out there alone. I fear for your safety. That woman. She scares me. I'm afraid she might harm you. Emmy. Radiating confidence. Affirmed. She won't harm me. 
I feel she wants to tell me something. Though he worried. Charles relented. Please be careful. If you're not back in half an hour. I'll come after you. Even if I have to crawl. I'll mourn you if anything happens. Instead of replying. Emmy planted a tender kiss on his lips before jumping out of the car. As she treaded along the path. Charles watched her retreating figure. Exhaling with a mix of concern and hope. Mentally offering silent prayers for her safe return. With a cautious stride. Emmy navigated the parched grassy path. Leading her to the dilapidated church ruins. Every step reverberated with an inexplicable sense of presence. She felt the woman's aura lingering. Despite the eerie atmosphere. There was an odd sense of solace that enveloped her. As she ventured closer to the crumbling edifice. Struggling to pry open the aged door. She found herself in a cramped room with. Weathered windows and floors worn away by time. Desolation hung heavy in the air. Leaving Emmy uncertain of where to begin. Slowly moving toward where the altar once stood. She found it barren. Save for a disturbance that sent a flock of birds. Fluttering from the dilapidated roof. Showering her with cobwebs and debris. In her panic to rid herself of the intruding insects. A pendant slipped from her grasp. Threatening to vanish among the debris. Frantically searching among the dry leaves and accumulated detritus. Her heart raced until she spotted it nestled securely under aged planks. The realization of its concealed resting place sent a shiver down her spine. Open it. A voice seemed to whisper so near that it startled Emmy. Making her whirl around. Finding no one behind her. Caught in a momentary rush of regret for entering this place. Her desperate urge to flee warred against her determination to confront her fears. Summoning courage. She grappled with the stubborn manhole cover. Despite her effort. It remained steadfast. Gritting her teeth. She exerted all her might until the lid finally yielded. Revealing a small recess in the floor. Within lay an enigmatic cloth of indiscernible colors and composition. Covering a trove of aged books. A mysterious jar. And an imposing silver cross. The unearthed discovery left Emmy breathless. The air thick with a potent mix of anticipation and trepidation. Emmy stood there. Grappling with a mixture of reluctance and revulsion. Just as she was about to touch the contents in the niche. A sudden hand rested on her shoulder. Sending a shiver down her spine. Startled. She closed her eyes. Questioning the unknown presence. I want to take you away. Groaned the voice. A disconcerting utterance that froze Emmy in place. Confused and anxious. She hesitated. Unsure of how to respond to this mysterious entity. Another voice. Familiar and comforting. Interrupted her confusion. It was Charles. His concern palpable as he called out. Worried about her prolonged absence. With a sense of relief. Emmy felt the hand on her shoulder disappear. Carefully. She extracted the aged books. Clutching them protectively against her chest. As she hurried to depart from the uncanny ruins, rushing back to Charles. She found him struggling to maneuver the wheelchair out of the car. Visibly anxious due to her prolonged disappearance. Emmy's heart sank as Charles revealed she had been gone for over an hour. Her perception of time had been wildly distorted within the confines of the ruins. Apologetic for her inadvertent absence. She quickly explained the accidental discovery of the hidden books. Attributing it to a chance encounter. Purposefully vague about the real experience within the ruins. Handing over the books to Charles. She sensed his disbelief and astonishment. His eagerness to explore the newfound treasures. Was evident as he scrutinized the notes and texts. Deciphering the faded ink with keen interest. As Emmy ignited the engine. She glanced at Charles. 
his intent focus on the aged pages. Dark hair cascaded down his collar, framing his face as he pored over the ancient records, occasionally squinting in an attempt to decipher the faded script. His curiosity and determination to unearth. The secrets hidden within the texts were unmistakable. The sudden realization struck the girl. She had fallen deeply and irrevocably in love. With this guy within a couple of days of getting to know him. It wasn't love at first sight. But it was since the moment they met in the library. Of the mansion two and a half weeks ago. He had sensed her gaze. Their eyes locked. And the world seemed to fade away. It was a kind of real magic that made everything else inconsequential. Two souls found each other. And nothing else held significance. She feared for his safety. Realizing how unbearable life would be without him. Yet. Everything was alright now that she was with him. Moving closer. Emmy caressed Charles's cheek where a faint stubble had appeared. I'm here with you. Right beside you. She reassured him. I kept feeling someone else was in the church. And I couldn't protect you. That thought was agonizing. She confessed. But let's move forward together. She placed tender kisses on his lips and maneuvered. The car in reverse after turning it on the narrow road. Pressing the gas pedal. They headed towards the estate. Mrs. Nelson. Worried sick. Rushed out to meet them. I've been so worried. Grandma. Charles exclaimed. Adding humorously. We're alive. But terribly hungry. Don't scare us like that again. Mrs. Nelson admonished Emmy. It could be dangerous. I apologize. Mrs. Nelson. I promise it won't happen again. Emmy replied guiltily. Acknowledging Charles's storytelling abilities. Which charmed the old lady. Later. In her room. Emmy noticed five missed calls from her mother. Feeling embarrassed. She called her back. Mom. Everything's fine. No need for the police. My phone was charging in my room. We were out for a walk. I'll tell you all the details soon. Please. Don't worry. I've been waiting for your call. Just promise me you won't do anything reckless. Her mother pleaded. Emmy reassured her. I won't. Mom. I promise. Emmy engaged in a 40-minute conversation with her mother. Steering clear of any discussion about her relationship with Charles. The church. And the enigmatic woman who plagued her thoughts. Post-dinner. Fatigue set in again for Emmy. And curiously. Charles responded with joy as she touched his knee. They eagerly awaited until all the mansion's residents retired to bed. Finding himself in Emmy's room. Charles gratefully settled onto her bed. While Emmy. Holding a church folio. Positioned herself beside him. As Charles delved into a chronicle dating back to 1006. The complexities of names. Surnames. And family connections overwhelmed them. What exactly are we searching for? Asked Emmy. Trying to make sense of the records. Patience. Emmy. It takes time. I'm thirsty and it's stifling today. Remarked Charles. Emmy promptly jumped off the bed. Asking. Do you need anything? Charles gazed at her wistfully. You have no idea how much I need right now. I mean it. Emmy smiled. Assuring him. I believe that one day will make all your dreams and wishes come true. I believe that too. Charles affirmed. Kissing her palm. For now. A simple ham and cheese sandwich would be perfect. With dusk veiling the hallway, Emmy refrained from turning on the lights to avoid waking Lizzie. Sneaking into the kitchen. 
she poured herself a glass of water. Hastily drank it. And began preparing a sandwich. However. An eerie realization struck her. She wasn't alone. Slowly turning towards the window. Emmy spotted the woman standing there. Fixing her gaze on her. Find me a way out. Whispered the ghost-like figure. Perplexed and desperate to help. Emmy struggled with the cryptic message. 1825. Remember 1825. The words echoed in her mind. Was it a birth or death date? The haunting vision dissipated suddenly. Leaving Emmy trembling with hands that felt scalded. Confused and unnerved. She quickly finished her sandwich and hurried back to her room. I know what to look for. 1825. She exclaimed to Charles. Who couldn't comprehend her sudden realization. Why would you think that? Charles questioned. Just trust me. Emmy urged. Sitting beside him as he combed through. Pages in search of the specific date. Finally. She found it. May 15. 1825 at Peterson Manor. Mr. Andrew had a daughter named Emmy. Was it merely a coincidence? As Charles continued reading the chronicle dated August 2nd, 1825, a significant detail emerged. A son named Charles was born to Mr. Nelson. Both young men exchanged a knowing glance. Everything began to fall into place. It was their ancestors. Miss Emmy and Mr. Charles. Who shared a profound love story. The puzzle started to connect. Continue reading carefully. Urged Emmy. It mentions that in 1842. Emmy was married to Mr. Kingsley. Who tragically passed away the night after. Their wedding under horrible circumstances. Charles glanced at Emmy. Asking for her thoughts. What do you think about that? Emmy contemplated for a moment. I believe this woman had a hand in his death. It's not certain. But I sense she wasn't an ordinary woman. There was an inexplicable power about her that I could feel constantly. And maybe. She paused. Locking eyes with Charles. That power resides in me too. What do you mean? Charles inquired. I think she was a witch. Emmy revealed. All the symbols I see in my dreams. The herbs. Those recurring dreams. It feels like genuine visions. Emmy fell silent. Reluctant to elaborate. Which deeply concerned Charles. Tell me. He urged. She was in the church spoke to me. And you didn't mention it. Charles grew agitated. She could have heard you. He grabbed Emmy's arm. Emphasizing the potential danger. She's not going to harm me. Emmy reassured him. She wants my help. I believe this woman is my ancestor. The same Emmy mentioned in the book. Charles stared at her intently. Sensing an unusual energy emanating from her. From their first encounter. He felt she was extraordinary. Her touch seemed to awaken something within him. As if they had known each other for lifetimes. Their initial kiss had only affirmed this connection. Now. It fell upon him to uncover the truth about. What transpired two centuries ago. Why his family was afflicted by this terrible curse. Charles was convinced that his own dreams held the answers. He understood there was a reason behind the tragic deaths. That plagued their family for generations. Determined to unveil the mystery. Charles delved deeper into the unfolding history. Driven by the certainty that there was a purpose to their affliction. Interrupting Charles's thoughts. Emmy declared. I must visit the remains of the Peterson estate. Whatever's left of it. There's a vacant lot. A few ruins. All overgrown with grass. 
Charles hesitated momentarily. Let it be. No. I really need to. Insisted Emmy. Causing Charles to tense up. Wait. There's still a record from 1851. Mr. Nelson's son. Charles. Married Bella Peterson. Mr. Peterson's daughter. He married our Emmy's sister. What could all this mean? Perhaps they were just lovers. Suggested Emmy. And then he married her sister. If she also possessed supernatural powers. She might have cursed her former lover after feeling betrayed. It would make sense. Charles agreed. Suddenly recalling something. Upstairs in my grandfather's office. There are old documents. A merchant certificate. They're displayed like museum pieces. I saw them as a kid but forgot about them. Said Charles. Considering they might offer more information. How do we get there? Inquired Emmy. Charles smirked. It might surprise you. But there's an elevator in the house. They ended up falling asleep together on Emmy's bed. She felt the steady rhythm of his heartbeat under her palm. Which brought her a sense of peace. However. A disturbing dream soon engulfed her. No. No. Please don't. She pleaded in the dream. A tall. Thin man grabbed her hand. Dragging her down narrow stairs. She cried and struggled. Clinging to the dungeon walls. While he continued to grip her firmly. You're my shame. Spawn of hell. The man uttered with disdain. Accusing her of being a witch. I wish I had strangled her when she saw the light. Emmy's eyes widened with horror as they reached a wrought iron door. She pleaded desperately. But he had already unlocked the door. Revealing a dark. Icy chamber made of stone. Chilling and gaping like a grave. The man in Emmy's nightmare forcefully. Pushed her into the chamber. Commanding her to sit there until she perished. She pleaded with terror. Calling out. No. No. Please don't leave. Father. No. Suddenly. Emmy jolted awake. Frightened by the vivid and distressing dream. She realized it wasn't just a dream. The dawn's delicate pink hues painted the bedroom walls. Confirming the reality of her fear. Sobbing and struggling to catch her breath. Emmy felt the horror of the tormented Emmy Peterson. From her dreams coursing through her. It was a nightmarish episode. A tragic chapter from the past. Charles. Sensing her distress. Awkwardly rose and comforted her. What did you see? Tell me about it. He urged. Amidst sobs. She recounted the nightmare. How Emmy Peterson died in that dungeon. Succumbing to hunger. Cold. And fear. Do you understand why? She asked. Overwhelmed. I don't know. It's terrible. Inhuman. Charles replied. Perplexed. But what does my family have to do with it? Did she kill someone who was my ancestor? We need to find out. Emmy replied. Slightly calmer in his embrace. After their morning routine and some moments to compose themselves. Emmy and Charles took a peaceful stroll in the garden. They enjoyed a quiet breakfast of thin pancakes with jam and strong tea. Relishing the serenity of the late May morning in the gazebo. Fortunately. Mrs. Nelson was absent. Preoccupied with urgent town business. Which allowed Charles the freedom to explore the second floor. An area she forbade him from visiting. Charles and Emmy discreetly accessed a small elevator. Hidden between the pantry and the kitchen. Ascending to the unexplored second floor. Passing through several doors. They arrived at a wide wooden door leading to Mr. Nelson's office. The room was silent. 
except for the mechanical hum of the wheelchair, and the palpitations of their hearts. Inside, they found the display case alongside documents on the subject they sought. Among several pages of appropriations in Mr. Nelson's office, Charles found a mouthpiece with tobacco remnants, an antique flintlock, and a silver set, suggesting the Nelsons were avid smokers. Searching for a key, Charles uncovered one attached to a chain inside a desk drawer. Emmy chuckled, feeling like Nancy Drew, her childhood heroine. Yet, she was nervously trembling as they delved deeper. Suddenly, she caught a distinct whiff of dampness and decay lingering in the air. As Charles examined old receipts from the 1870s, one from 1851 stood out. The Nelsons purchased their maid, Violet, and her infant daughter from the Petersons. However, this puzzled Emmy. Last night, while perusing church records, Charles found an entry indicating a girl was born and died three days later. Who was the child sold alongside Violet to the Nelsons? Their search yielded no further valuable information. Exiting into the corridor, an unexpected chill enveloped them. Charles sneezed, appearing disoriented. They attempted to use the elevator, but the doors remained shut. There's a ramp on the stairs. Charles reassured Emmy, turning his wheelchair. Wait for me. Don't go down yourself. Confused, Emmy obeyed. Suddenly, she heard a frightened cry and saw Charles hurtling toward the stairs. She sprinted after him but couldn't reach him in time. Did the chair and Charles crash down the stairs? No. She arrived to find Charles lying motionless. Bending over him, Emmy caught a glimpse of movement. A bright crimson skirt disappearing around the hallway corner. Before she could comprehend what had occurred. Mrs. Nelson's panicked voice echoed in the hospital corridor. Demanding to know Emmy's whereabouts. The faulty chair was blamed, but Emmy hardly registered Mrs. Nelson's words amidst her shock. Emmy's entire focus fixated on the figure lying. Behind the large glass in the hospital room. A guy connected to numerous tubes and monitors. She felt an urgent need to enter. Why did you go to the second floor? It was highly irrational. Mrs. Nelson lamented. Charles wanted to show me my grandfather's office. Emmy explained. If Charles doesn't recover. I can't go on. Mrs. Nelson exclaimed before succumbing to sleep on a narrow couch in the hospital corridor. As everyone dispersed, Emmy quietly slipped into the room. Pain and regret engulfed her as she observed Charles. Pale, handsome, and unconscious. Bruises marked his shoulders. His tightly closed eyes indicated he hadn't regained consciousness. Cautiously, she settled beside the bed, grasping his hand. It felt familiar and warm. Tearfully, she implored him to wake up, pleading for his belief in her and her dire need for him. Suddenly, she wiped her tears and closed her eyes, concentrating in her mind. She envisioned a wreath of nine herbs intertwined. A bundle of potent energy. Slowly. She felt the binding energy within her loosen. And her limbs regained sensitivity. Heat surged throughout her body. Holding Charles's hand again. She whispered unfamiliar ancient words. A language known to few on earth. She channeled her energy generously giving it to him in his dire need. Emmy stirred as someone stroked her hair. She found herself sitting beside the hospital bed. Familiar gray eyes gazed at her. The hand that was recently lifeless now ran through her curls. Overjoyed, Emmy stood up and rushed to Charles. 
checking if he was awake. Are you awake? Thank God. I was so frightened. She expressed. He responded with a passionate kiss. A nurse caught them in the act. Demanding they leave the room. Yet seemed to acknowledge the patients. Improving condition before shooing them away. She sprinted urgently to summon the doctor. Propelled by a sense of impending crisis. Simultaneously. The door burst open. And Mrs. Nelson hurried into the room with a swiftness. That matched Emmy's urgency. Racing toward her grandson. Minutes later, the doctor arrived. His arrival providing a brief respite amid the tension. Emmy retreated to the hallway. Her mind consumed by thoughts of the grand mansion. And the events unfolding within its walls. With unwavering conviction. She knew that the unfortunate incident. Involving Charles hadn't occurred by chance. Determined. She resolved to put an end to the mysterious. Circumstances surrounding him. When the commotion surrounding Charles settled momentarily. Emmy seized the opportunity to check on him once more. Inside the room. She found Mrs. Nelson dozing off in an armchair positioned near the window. Upon catching sight of Emmy. Charles extended his hands toward her. Attempting to mask his concern for the elderly woman. I have a surprise for you. Charles announced with a smile. Playfully revealing her ankles by lifting the blanket's edge. Witnessing his movement. Tears of joy streamed down Emmy's cheeks. She cupped his face in her hands and planted a tender kiss on his forehead. Overwhelmed by the moment. I always believed this would happen. Emmy murmured softly. Her voice laced with emotion. In these few days. It feels like a lifetime has passed. You're the reason for all of this. Truly. Charles affirmed with sincerity. You're my guardian angel. Chuckling softly. Emmy replied. You're too kind. Charles. I have to go for a bit. But I'll return soon. She informed him. Concern creased Charles's forehead. Where are you going? To see my mother. Emmy replied. A small white lie to ease his worry. Since I'm in town. Relief washed over Charles's face. Please. Give her my regards. Pausing at the doorway. Emmy stole another glance at Charles. Her heart ached at the sight of him. Realizing that life had irrevocably changed for both of them. With a soft wave and an air kiss directed at Charles. She slipped out of the room. Later. Around 11 o'clock at night. Emmy arrived at the mansion. The driver. Courtesy of Alex. Dropped her off near the porch and drove toward the garage. The sole window aglow in the expansive house was in the kitchen. Drawing Emmy toward it instinctively. Her stomach rumbled, she hadn't eaten anything substantial. Inside. Lizzie had been seated at the table throughout the morning. Sipping on tea and idly watching television. Catching sight of Emmy. Lizzie startled awake. How is our boy? Lizzie inquired anxiously. Referring to Charles. Mrs. Nelson called and mentioned he's awake. The worst is over. She added wearily. Settling back into her chair. He's all right. Emmy reassured her. Masking her hunger with a smile. Do you have anything to eat? Of course. Dear. You must be famished. Lizzie replied. Patting her own head in concern. I'll fix you something right away. With hurried steps. Lizzie hurried to the refrigerator. Soon laying out a spread that included pancakes. Mashed potato patties. Olivier salad. And a slice of apple pie. Emmy beamed gratefully at the offering. I appreciate it. Emmy expressed her gratitude with genuine warmth. I can't possibly eat all of this. 
Emmy confessed to Lizzie. Feeling overwhelmed by the generous spread. Come with me. I'm on a diet. Lizzie responded cheerfully. Attempting to ease Emmy's concern. Eat as much as you want. Nodding in gratitude. Emmy began cutting into the cutlet with a knife. Her mind already planning a morning. Visit to the ruins of the Peterson estate. She harbored a strong belief that amidst those ruins. A clue lay waiting for her discovery. However. Her thoughts were haunted by a recurring dream. A vision of destruction and chaos. In her dream. Flames engulfed everything. A woman struggling amidst the inferno. Desperately seeking an escape. The piercing screams of people consumed. By the fire resonated within her. Amplifying their fear. Smoke suffocated her senses. Making it impossible to breathe. While sparks danced perilously close. Amid this surreal nightmare. Emmy witnessed herself. Alongside another figure. The enigmatic Emmy Peterson. Inexplicably. The flame seemed to avoid her. Leaving her unscathed as she exhibited her. Unblemished palms buried in the ground. Startled awake. Emmy found herself sitting upright in bed. Her pendant ominously searing her skin. Reacting impulsively. She tore the chain off and flung the sinister jewel to the floor. Convinced it represented something malevolent. A link to the fire that had ravaged the manor. Her mind raced with questions, how was she involved? How could she have been in the dungeon and set the fire? Restlessness overtook her. Unable to endure the uncertainty any longer. Emmy leaped out of bed. Despite the darkness still shrouding the outside world. She hurried to the bathroom. Splashing her face with ice-cold water. She attempted to shake off the remnants of her haunting dream. After brushing her teeth. She dressed in jeans. A t-shirt. And soft tights. Preparing herself for the day ahead. Stepping out onto the porch. She was greeted by the gradual emergence of the sun behind the horizon. Painting the sky with soft hues of pink. The chill in the air prompted her to slip on a jacket. Near the porch, the stable boy sat smoking on a bench before his morning duties. Good morning. Emmy greeted him warmly. Hello. Good morning. Young lady. The older but robust man replied. What brings you out so early? I love early walks. Emmy fibbed with a faint smile. Disguising her true intentions. Heading towards the gate. Emmy walked with a sense of purpose. As though instinct guided her steps. She navigated past the familiar grove. Moving steadily along a winding path that traversed fields. Overgrown with untamed grass and weeds. Such vast land lying empty. She mused to herself. Struck by the apparent desolation. A strange feeling enveloped her. A sense that she was stepping onto Peterson's territory. She was home. Continuing for another 300 meters. She finally caught sight of the ruins of an old house. Concealed among the thick growth of birch trees. They stood as silent remnants of a bygone era. Hidden to the casual observer. Emmy felt a surge of inexplicable excitement. Mingled with a lump in her throat. Suppressing her emotions. She ventured deeper into the grove. Which had now become a solemn memorial to her ancestors. And the intricate history of the Peterson family. Emmy's gaze fixated on the woman immediately upon spotting her. Standing just outside a small suburb. Her disheveled hair cascaded loosely. Entangled with dust and cobwebs that adorned her stained dress. The sight triggered a rush of memories flooding back to Emmy's mind. Recalling the girl and the inexplicable encounter. What do you want? Emmy's voice quivered as tears welled up in her eyes. Pleading for answers. The woman's voice. Barely audible. Barely moved her vulgar lips. 
Come. She whispered. The word hanging in the air like an ominous decree. Silently. They traversed what remained of the once grand courtyard. Descending down the hillside toward the river. As they reached the water's edge. The woman halted abruptly. Fixating her gaze downward before vanishing from sight. Emmy approached the spot where the woman. Had stood moments before and found herself. Standing on something concealed beneath a layer of moss. With a sense of inevitability. She uncovered a hatch. Hidden in the ground. A sudden wave of nausea hit Emmy. Squatting down. She apprehensively acknowledged what the hatch represented. Knowing deep within what or who lay concealed deep underground. Did she possess the strength and courage to. Unravel the mysteries that lay beneath. Could she confront the malevolence that increasingly permeated this place? The image of Charles's pale face flashed before her, igniting a surge of determination within her. She needed answers. They needed answers. Scrounging through the rubble, Emmy located a piece of iron and meticulously began to strip away the earth and moss encasing the hatch cover. After an arduous half hour, she grasped the heavy ring with both hands, exerting all her strength to tug at the unyielding lid. Yet, it remained obstinately immovable due to its size and weight. Finally, Emmy knelt down on all fours, pressing her palms firmly against the ground. At that very moment, an overwhelming surge of energy coursed through her infusing every cell in her body with an unprecedented vitality. With renewed determination, she made another attempt. And this time, the hatch yielded immediately. Peering into the darkness below, she perceived the musty, damp-smelling spiral walkway. She promptly switched on the flashlight on her cell phone. Summoning her courage, Emmy descended the spiral. Recognizing the place from her recurring dreams. Exhaustion. Pain. And an inexplicable sense of despair washed over. Her as she stepped onto the first stair. Reality intertwined with visions. Transporting her through a series of haunting scenes. I loved him. Oh how I loved him. A voice sang above her ear. She witnessed a young Emmy dancing gracefully at a ball with Mr. Charles. Both exchanging tender and affectionate glances. Appearing no older than sixteen. Then came fleeting glimpses. A young Emmy exchanging vows with an elderly. Man marked by a prominent mole on his cheek. A marriage altar. And later. A bedroom scene where a frightened girl cowered as her husband loomed over her like a foreboding cloud. In a tumultuous moment, he seized her arms. But Emmy fiercely recoiled, thrusting him away with such force that he was propelled across the room, colliding with a table and leaving a splatter of blood on the parquet floor. Then, the scene shifted to an older Emmy lying in bed with her lover. Charles. A swift transition followed transporting Emmy through a series of fragmented memories. A haunting montage. There she was. A silent observer at Charles and Bella's wedding. Standing by the door. Whispering curses unheard by the celebrants. Unnoticed by her. Her father's fearful gaze fixated upon her. Laden with concern and apprehension. The visions continued. Jumping through episodes of Emmy's tumultuous life. A pregnant Emmy writhing in hysteria. Soon to give birth, but she's denied access to her newborn daughter by her father. Who callously locks her away in her room. Amidst these chaotic glimpses of her past. A recurring vision surfaced. The image of her father confining his anguished daughter in a dark. Subterranean space. Emmy's desperate struggles and cries echoed. As she clawed at the stone floor and walls. Amidst this turmoil. A realization dawned. 
Emmy understood the curse plaguing the Nelson family. Charles remained in peril. And she felt an urgent need to protect him. Emmy grappled with her identity. The truth of her lineage and heritage as Emmy's Harris. A witch. The revelation left her head spinning. Grounding her only when she returned to the present moment. Before her stood a pitch black door. Ominously enclosing her with no visible means of access. Familiar etchings adorned the cast iron surface. Reminding her of her father's fear of her escape. Her fingers grazed something chilling. A key. Whose last holder she could only speculate upon. Without hesitation. Emmy inserted the key into the lock and. With determined effort. Twisted it. A foreboding coldness enveloped her as the massive door creaked open. For a fleeting moment. Emmy hesitated. Her instincts conflicting with an authoritative inner voice compelling her forward. With hesitant steps. She entered a chamber. Shrouded in intimidating darkness and an eerie coldness. Stone walls enclosed her. Exuding a palpable aura of fear and death. Emmy's gaze fell upon a sight that pierced her heart. A small skeleton seated against the far wall. Tears welled uncontrollably in her eyes as an overwhelming sorrow engulfed her. She empathized deeply with this forlorn figure. Trapped in a two-century-old torment. Betrayed and denied peace by those closest to her. In that desolate chamber. Emmy felt an unbearable ache for the girl who had suffered a tragic fate. Craving happiness yet meeting only betrayal and isolation from her loved ones. I want to depart. The figure whispered softly. Emmy leaned in closer to the skeletal remains. Meeting the longing gaze of the figure. It was a poignant moment. And Emmy recognized the unspoken yearning within its eyes. Bury me. The figure pleaded. Suddenly. A rush of memory surged within Emmy. Memories of the past. Of motivations and intentions. Why did you attempt to harm Charles? Emmy inquired. Seeking answers amidst the haunting revelation. The figure gently shook its head. I saved him. Without my intervention. His fate would have been sealed. So. You meant him no harm. Emmy sought clarification. Again. The figure shook its spectral head. Bury me. It repeated. Its voice faint yet insistent. Drawing nearer to the remains. Emmy noticed a glimmer catching the flashlight's beam. Amidst the crypt's stony floor. Among the bone remnants that once formed fingers. Lay an emerald ring. The very gift from Mr. Charles. Take it. It belongs to you. The figure spoke. Urging Emmy to claim the jewelry. With trembling hands, Emmy lifted the weighty piece. As she held it, a palpable energy seemed to resonate from within the ring, coursing through her bones. An unusual sensation even for her accustomed intuition. Tenderly, Emmy removed her jacket and carefully cradled each bone fragment within it. A sheen of tears adorning her face. The tragic fate reflected in the remains evoked a deep sense of empathy. No soul deserved such a demise. As she emerged from the crypt. The harsh daylight stung her eyes. The sun high in the sky. Leaving her wondering about the passage of time. Spent within that haunting space. The voice persisted. Urging her onward. A translucent figure. Now serene stood beside her. Its ethereal form palpable yet insubstantial. Emmy felt an unmistakable guidance. A purpose unfolding within her consciousness. She discerned the location of Emmy Peterson's ancestors' burial ground. The old cemetery adjacent to the church. A place she had once visited. Clutching memories tightly. Emmy cradled the collected bones against her chest. Pacing toward the church. The ghostly presence lingered behind her. 
as she ventured among the overgrown weeds. And tombstones within the cemetery, her journey brought her to a familiar sight. A figure by the fallen fence. The grave of Mr. Charles. Gently nestling the remains against the slab. The figure closed its eyes. Overwhelmed with emotion. Tears flowed freely down Emmy's cheeks. But she found a shovel amidst the remnants of the church. Grasping a cross from its hiding place. She returned to the grave. Chiseling into the unyielding earth. Laboring until a small hole formed. With reverence. Emmy laid the remains. Wrapped in her jacket. Within the recess. And tenderly covered them. She solemnly placed a cross atop the burial site. Offering a brief prayer. The figure stood silently beside her. A silent witness to the peaceful interment of a tormented soul. Thank you. Honey. The voice echoed. As Emmy stood face to face with another version of herself. The past and the present colliding in a moment of profound significance. Gazing down at the pendant hanging from her own neck. Emmy felt a tug, an unspoken prompting from the spectral figure. You don't need it anymore. Leave it here. The ghostly voice advised. Complying. Emmy carefully detached the pendant. Placing it solemnly upon the grave. With a reverent gesture. She embedded it within the earth. Casting her eyes around for the ghostly presence. Only to realize that it had vanished. Fatigued and emotionally spent. Emmy made her way back to the mansion as dusk veiled the surroundings. Lizzie intercepted her in the hallway. Her expression tinged with concern and irritation. Where did you go? We were about to call the police. Lizzie's voice was laden with worry. I went for a walk. Emmy replied wearily. Not eager to engage in conversation. All day. Lizzie's query earned a nod of affirmation from Emmy. Who simply wanted solitude. Are you here? Honey. Mrs. Nelson's radiant presence emerged from the library. Her face was aglow with joy. Good evening. Emmy. She greeted. We have wonderful news. You were right. Charles is showing improvement. He moved his toes today. I'm sincerely glad. Emmy replied softly. How is he now? He's doing wonderfully. Rehabilitation awaits. But he'll be home soon. Don't worry. Your job is secure. Mrs. Nelson reassured her. You must be famished. No. Thank you. Emmy murmured faintly. Her exhaustion palpable as she retreated. To her room and fell into a deep sleep. Months flew by. And Charles progressed. Eventually using crutches to maneuver. Emmy couldn't forget the pivotal moment. When she presented him with the ring discovered in the crypt. She recounted the entire tale. The crypt's discovery. The spectral encounter. Every detail from start to finish. Emmy. How could you go there alone? Charles held her close. His eyes brimming with tenderness and warmth. I had to go. For you. For everybody. She responded. Swallowing the lump in her throat. Emmy. I love you. Be my wife. Charles's words reverberated. Transporting Emmy back to the 19th century. Time passed and Emmy and Charles waltzed amidst the mirrored ballroom of the Peterson estate. Exuding tranquility, two years flew by, and in a softly lit nursery, their daughter, Isabella, slept soundly in her crib. Around her neck, a golden cross shimmered, a token of hope and faith, a translucent figure, barely visible near the window whispered words of comfort and farewell, ensuring a future unshackled from the curse's grip. Goodbye. 
you will be happy. The curse has been lifted forever. The ethereal voice murmured, imparting a sense of peace and finality.